Okay, we're going to start our presentation. We got just a real small presentation, then we'll go to your presentation, okay? Okay. Okay, this is Chance Hall, and he's going to give his presentation first. Hey, that's good to have I don't know how this camera works. Okay. Is this okay. The lighter? So. What about the projector? Okay, we need to go on this. Okay, I gotta talk. Uh, wait, no. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, my name's Chance, and I'll be talking about saltwater taffy today. And so, saltwater taffy is a form of taffy that was originally made in Atlantic City, Atlantic City New Jersey. Um, it's unknown who made it, but a lot of people state uh, David Bradley, Joseph Fallinger, and uh, Enoch James as people who were really important in the process of its creation. And the reason it's called saltwater taffy is also debated where either an employee accidentally used saltwater taffy or it was sold so close to saltwater as it was sold on a boardwalk that it was the name that the locals gave it. So in order to make saltwater taffy, uh, you just need half cup of water, two thirds cup of corn syrup, uh, cornstarch, butter, sea salt, and whatever flavor you want. And you put all the ingredients together in a pot, preferably like a lot bigger than all the ingredients that you put in because this boils, because this bubbles up. And uh, if you have the wrong size pot, it will spill over. I learned that the hard way. So you'd stir that until all of them are combined and then you just stop stirring because if you keep on stirring, then the sugar is going to mess up and it's not going to work. And you allow it to reach uh, 260 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So that way it bends and uh, taffy like, so you can chew it. So when it hits 260 degrees, you pour it out and you allow it to cool. So that way you don't burn yourself handling it. Again, learn that one the hard way. And so, after that, you, after when it's cooled so you can touch it, you remove it from the pan and you repeatedly have to like pull the candy and place it together and you have to keep on pulling it to add uh, small little air bubbles that reflect light so the candy becomes a lighter and more solid color. Because when you pour the candy, it's more translucent and uh, this just helps aerate the candy to make it a bit firmer and a uh, better color. And then you would take your massive candy put it, like, make it into a rope, and you'd start cutting small bike-shaped pieces, wrap them up with paper so that way they don't stick to stick together, or pass them out, and then pass them out and uh, just eat it. Uh, this makes about 60 pieces, so that's a lot of people. And, yeah, that's salt water taffy. Any questions? I mean, that's a student, I don't know. We missed your introduction. Could you introduce oh. yourself? Oh, hi. Um, I'm Chance Hall. I go to... I'm Chance Hall. I go to Dell Valley High School, and I am a junior. Nice to meet you. And uh, these are students from Boonesboro Middle School. And, well, here, this is our first time. Here. Oh, <laughs> it's in the camera. I'm too short. It's Okay. Okay. Part of your presentation on your uh, cake was it a cake that you made? No, it's a candy. It's he yeah. made saltwater taffy. I make a lot of saltwater taffy. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Okay. okay. We're trying to get off of that now and go to uh, Boonesboro. You have another school here from Canada, and uh, <laughs> turn on the light. We'll go ahead with, yeah, thank you guys. Let's start with the Canadian uh, presentation so and then we'll I'm not, go I'm here. the Boonesboro presentation. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Uh, which one? Yeah, that one. Okay. <laughs> Where do we present? Look, you press, press that. Yeah. And then press start. And <laughs> introduce yourself. Okay. Hi. Hi, guys. My name is Aja. My name is RJ. I'm India. I'm Miki. <laughs> and we're going to be presenting today Kate's Cupcakes and Desserts from Canada. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. okay. So, uh, why are desserts called so? So, it's derived from a French word, desservir, which is a verb that means unserve or clear the table. Um, it implies that the last food item is served before the meal is ended. So foods that are typically served last are sweet sweet foods, which is called an A dessert. So cool fact, when you're stressed, you crave and eat desserts like ice cream, cake, and much more. Do you know why? Because stressed backwards is desserts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. Hey, hi, I'm Nadine. So I'm going to be talking about baklava. So baklava is one of the oldest treats known around the Middle East and European countries. Um, it resembles a similar dessert that is honey-covered baked layered dough that was around in the Roman times. And, and the Greeks and Turks still argue over the dishes and desserts were Turkish or Greek. <laughs> Um, my name is Audra. Um, this dessert is known as kaimati and it's a Kenyan uh, or Tanzanian dessert and it's a gooey ball, not balls, ball coated in sweet syrup. In most households it is prepared in the holy month of Ramadan. You go down. Okay, can I do? Yeah. Uh, hi, Jen and Duke, here to give a brief history of the cupcake. Um, the earliest description of what is now known as a cupcake um, was in 1796 when a recipe for a light cake to bake in small cups was included in an American cookery by Amelia Simmons. This is the first written history of the cupcake, but no one really knows if it was around before that. All right, so my name is Emily, and we'll and I'll be talking about meringues. So meringues are a dessert made of egg white, sugar, cream of tartar, and vanilla almond extract. They have a longer bake time, usually around one or two hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. They are firm on the outside and chewy on the inside. You can easily add flavors like peppermint, lemon, chocolate, espresso, and almost anything you could want. Um, and I'm Emma, and I did cannoli. So they're like an Italian tube-like pastry filled with a ricotta cheese filling. And they're made by rolling pastry dough over the end of a cannoli tube, frying them, and then filling them with a, a mixture made of ricotta cheese, icing sugar, vanilla extract, and heavy whipped cream. And you can put it in using a piping bag, so you can use different tips if you want. And they're usually garnished with chocolate or icing sugar, and they're served chilled. <laughs> Hi, my name is Erin. I'm Mia. I'm Kesha. I'm Terry. So we did the classic New York style cheesecake. So um, it's just something that a lot of people like in general cheesecake and there are different ways of making it. We just chose the New York style. So for the crust, you just need like graham crackers, sugar, um, ground cinnamon, and butter, and you just kind of mix them together. Yeah, and for the filling, you just need cream cheese, sugar, flour, eggs, and vanilla. And for the directions, you have to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Um, in a large bowl, combine graham crackers, one tablespoon of sugar, cinnamon, and melted butter. Um, you butter a 10 inch pan and press crust mixture into the bottom. In a large bowl of beet cream cheese and one quarter cup of sugar until fluffy and medium at high speed. Beat in flour on low speed until smooth. Using a fork, lightly beat the eggs. Add the eggs and three tablespoons of, three teaspoons of vanilla all at once to the mixture and beat on low speed until incorporated. Stir a half cup of sour cream. Pour butter and batter into a crust lined pan and pour in shallow baking pan and then set in the oven for 40 minutes. Stir together remaining sour cream and quarter cup of sugar and one teaspoon. Spread mixture evenly on top of the cake. Return to oven, let it bake for 15 minutes. 
cool in town for 15 minutes, then remove from pan and cool for another 30 minutes on a wire rack. And then you can just top it with anything that you want to top it with. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, do it. Okay, well, I'm back still. Um, this is a traditional Brazilian dessert. They're called Pigadeiros and Beijinhos. So they're like um, condensed milk. So it's condensed milk and chocolate and milk. And you need to like just keep stirring it over like medium heat until it gets thick. And once it's thick, you roll them into small balls and then you can put them in like sprinkles and stuff. And they're really good. And yeah. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Josh, and I'm going to present uh, the uh, flan recipe. So, my family, being from El Salvador, um, we have a lot of traditional Spanish desserts, such as this one, flan. Um, Flan is a traditional Spanish dessert that is similar to cream or custard, um, but is a lot firmer and uh, more gelatin-like. In English, it could also be referred to as cream caramel. Flan is very heavily milk-based and is uh, generally served cold with uh, coffee or uh, just on its own. So <coughs> it's, it's a quite simple um, recipe, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the ingredients are uh, one cup of sugar, Three eggs, uh, 14 ounce, uh, 14 ounces of sweetened uh, condensed milk, one can of evaporated milk, um, and one tablespoon of uh, vanilla extract. So, like I said, it's very heavily milk based, as you can you can probably see there on the screen. Um, the directions: uh, first, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's 175 Celsius. Uh, it's in a small saucepan, heat sugar over medium heat. Shake and swirl until sugar becomes brown, uh, golden brown. Lift pan four to six inches. You know, that's just a general guideline. You can just hold it up slightly above the above the stove um, until keep mixing the sugar until it turns that brown a uh, golden brown color. Uh, if you over um, over mix it, it'll burn on you. So don't do that. Uh, for pour the caramelized sugar um, into about uh, one and a half quart casserole dish. Um, or you could use a pan as well, uh, and swirl the coat uh, and swirl it to coat the bottom of the pan or the dish. Blend sweetened condensed milk, cream milk, um, eggs, and vanilla. Blend on high heat for one minute, and then pour over caramelized sugar. Place the casserole dish into a larger pan and add one inch of hot water to the outer pan. Bake in preheated oven for 50 to 60 minutes, and then once it's finished, you can take it out and flip it upside down onto a plate and it comes out something looking like like this right here in that picture. Okay, uh, my name is Abdul and uh, I will be presenting you uh, Kanefa, which is a Middle Eastern dessert. So Kanefa is a Middle Eastern dessert that consists of a mixture of cheeses and sugar alongside crumbs shredded as a topping of the chibi dough. This dessert is very popular in uh, Palestine Egypt and the other countries in the Middle Eastern territory. Kanefa is a dessert that is used for cases of celebration as it represents an origin of some of these countries. This is, these are the recipes and the directions to make this dessert. So the recipe is one box shredded phyllo dough, 15 ounces of ricotta cheese, one cup shredded mozzarella cheese, a third of a cup of white sugar, 12 ounces unsalted butter, and three-thirds cup of rose water. And a few steps are preheating the oven to 400 degrees. Use a food processor to finely chop the frozen shredded phyllo dough. Pour the dough into a large mixing bowl in a separate bowl. Mix together the ricotta and mozzarella and a third of a cup of sugar. Place the butter in a large liquid cover bowl. Heat the butter in a microwave until completely melted and let it sit for several minutes. So thick white foam is going on top. 
Uh, carefully pour the butter into the bowl of phyllo dough. Use your hands to mix the butter and dough together. Make sure that the butter is absorbed by taking handfuls of the dough and rubbing it between your palms. Evenly spread the butter phyllo dough into a 9 by 13 inch pan and firmly press it into the bottom edges. Spread the cheese mixture onto the dough, avoiding the edges of the pan so it doesn't burn. Bake in preheated oven until the cheese is slightly golden and the edges of the dough are brown and bubbly. 30 to 35 minutes on bake. And uh, now we have um, a video. Okay, okay, hi, hello everybody. Um, okay, so um, recently we were um, making apple crisp and I was able to record what was going on and stuff. So the teacher asked me to make a video of the stuff that I recorded. So I made this like trailer like thing. It's, it, it's not meant to be taken seriously or anything. It was just for fun. So uh, I have it right here. And uh, yeah, you can sort of see it already. It mentions stoves. So, you know. uh, let's try and get this working here. Does it work? Okay. Uh, sorry, technical issues. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Okay. Can I do come help you? Uh, do I go? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Why is it not working? <laughs> no, I think this one is in the presentation, so you, it's downloaded, so it's like... Right. Okay, so are we not going to use Well, yeah, but then... Because <laughs> it has to be directly from the... um. Oh, okay. Wait, no, it's not. <laughs> so, are they not able to watch the video then? Control. What does that say? Dismiss. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Well, uh, I. Uh, there it is. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. Wait, what? What? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Okay, well, just, just refresh the page. Reload the page. Reload the page. The reload is just special. Oh my goodness. We're trying to solve these technical difficulties. We please, apologize. Please, 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 Oh, there it is. Okay. Enjoy. Let's go to Boonesboro. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions at all from Maryland? Um, we all enjoyed all of the desserts. We were all talking back there of how many of us do those international desserts in our house because we have such a very culture here in Maryland. So we enjoyed them all. Uh, we need to get into 
our Google Classroom to pull up our PowerPoint. So we're going to be maybe out of the picture for a second. And then okay, we'll no problem. That's okay. I have, I, have a, I have a question, and by that I mean I have a fleet of dozens of questions. Um, oh my god, all of us sound really good. Um, I don't, out of uh, all the people who just presented, what would you guys say uh, like is your favorite dessert out of all the desserts that you guys just presented? Ooh, should we should we take the camera at the class? Yeah. Like, I want professional opinions on this. <laughs> Wait, <I'm laughs> shaking. Because uh, again, <laughs> anybody has a question? <laughs> Anyone else? Can I have a, okay. Because I can't hold it. Anyone else? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop. Yeah. So you guys all like the cheesecake? Wow. Yeah. Interesting. This one looks good. <coughs> yeah, we saw a deal from Turkey this morning. It was very similar to that. Is it like tiramisu? Yeah. This was uh, Have you guys ever heard of tiramisu? Because it looks a lot like uh, pave. They put coffee flavor. Like, it looks like uh, tiramisu is pretty much like a coffee flavored version of pave. Basically, but I just wondering if you guys ever heard of that too. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that concludes our presentation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> this is just an empty chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it still there or no? Yeah, like oh. someone's sharing right now. Are they presenting? That's probably a case. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, so, um, I am Natalie. I'm Olivia. I'm Olivia. And we're presenting to you the Smith Island cake. So we are, we live in Greensboro, Maryland. And our steak cake is the Smith Island cake. And so we decided to do our presentation specifically on our state's cake. So, so this cake from Maryland is that it was first settled on March 25th, 1634. It was founded by Baltimore and the most popular populated city and it's named after him. Maryland was a southern state in the Civil War. The capital of Maryland is a map and it's known for its exports of blue crabs. The history of Smith Island is that Smith Island was originally discovered by John Smith, who settled there between 1659 and 1686. And the population in 2010 was 276 in the land area. So the Smith Island cake was originally four layers, but eventually as time went on, it became more of a contest to see how many layers could be put in a cake. And so as more layers were added, it's now typically eight to 10 layers. Um, the recipe for the Smith Island cake was first published in Mrs. Kitchen Smith Island at Smith Island Cookbook in 18 
from 1981. And um, the, origins, the origins of the cake are unknown, but it has been said before that it, when the men used to go oystering, they would make the cake because it would last longer. The ingredients for the cake are two sticks of unsalted room temperature butter, that is in chunks, and more butter for the um, pan. Two cups of flour, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one heaping teaspoon of baking powder, two cups of sugar, five large eggs, and one cup of evaporated milk. For the icing, it requires two cups of sugar, um, evaporated milk, unsweetened chocolate, unsalted butter, and vanilla extract. Uh, in order to build the cake, you put it, you uh, have to preheat the oven to 350 degrees and you lightly grease the pan um, and you use two or three cake pans at a time in order to make it more time efficient. And so you set the flour, salt, and baking powder together. And then you combine the butter and sugar in the bowl of a stand mixer and you beat at, on a medium speed until light and creamy. You add the eggs one at a time and beat until smooth, and then you reduce the speed to low and add the evaporated milk and the extract and water. And then you place three spoonfuls of batter in each of the cake pans, and that's about two thirds cups. And then you use the back of the spoon to spread it evenly. And then you can only bake two to three layers at a time in order for it to bake correctly. Um, for the icing, to make the icing, you combine the sugar and evaporated milk in a medium saucepan over the medium to low heat. You add the chocolate and butter and then warm stirring until they both have melted. And then you increase the heat to medium and then you cook it stirring occasionally for 10 to 15 minutes. Then you remove it from the heat and you add the vanilla extract and you stir it in. The icing will be thin but it'll thicken as it cools. And as the cake layers are done, you should run a spatula around the edge of the pan and ease out the layers of the cake. And then you let the layers of the cake cool and then Place the bottom layer on a cake plate, spreading two to three spoonfuls of icing on each layer. And you shouldn't worry if the layered tears since there's so many layers. And then you cover the top and sides of the cake with the remaining icing. Some different variations of Smith Island cake. There's many flavors, but the most traditional one was vanilla cake with chocolate icing. But there's also some such as pineapple cake, um, cookies and cream, mandarin orange, and German chocolate, and devil's cake. So the final product of the cake should be, it shouldn't be a very tall cake because the layers are very thin. So the history of cakes in the USA, we have a picture here in a timeline showing the famous cakes from 1850 and it begins with the Boston cream pie, which is a cake. And by the end of the timeline, you will see the Smith Island cake from Maryland. So this is our cake from Maryland at the very bottom of the island cake. That's interesting. Tell me yes. Yes. So we made our own video of making this Smith Island cake. And here it is. Hi, I'm Abigail. I'm Olivia. I'm Olivia. And I'm Natalie. And we're here in Maryland. Here at here today, we're here to discussing our Maryland State Service in the Smith Island. And we're going to assemble it for you. The final cake was established as the Maryland State Service on October 3rd, 2008. It's been a cake, 10 layers, and yellow cake. 
with chocolate frosting in between, and then after all the cheese layers, we have to add the We talk about this. Rin Island is home to the Maryland State Island Cake. It is located between Maryland and Virginia, and it's only to reach our country. It's 1600. Settlers that act like watermen and their families have lived at Rin Island for centuries. Their culture has been preserved in the multiple layer paint. Let's go. Unfortunately, this morning we had some students from uh, Tehran, uh, Iran, and then we had people from Bursa, Turkey, uh, people from Taiwan, people from uh, Ukraine, people from Argentina and Brazil, and they left shortly before y'all, the, you guys came on. So we really do appreciate that. It's really interesting to see the different things with cakes. The people from Turkey were showing how to make American different cakes, and then when the people other countries ask, well, what, where's your native cakes? And, and then he would say, well, you know, I, I, he didn't know what it was. So it's, it's kind of neat to combine, how you can combine native with uh, desserts. Yeah, so I mean, what did you get to learn out of doing a project about desserts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start Maryland first and then go to Canada. Maryland, what'd you learn? Um, we learned basically how much um, it really is to um, work as a team. 
That's um, good. Before this project, I actually had no clue what our Maryland State was going to do. So, um, I was excited to know that it was a popular cake, and it's actually been shipped out from Maryland to Alaska and California, and like Hollywood, like they cake from Maryland to them. And so that was exciting to know that people like our culture and our history. That's very good. Canada, what did you learn? What did you guys learn? <laughs> well, out of all your presentations, what did you notice about all the different types of desserts? The range and variety. The range and variety, right? And where our background is and, and the types of favorite desserts that we have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Agreed? Yeah. Because, uh, one thing, next month we're going to be talking about uh, Celebration food, food for you know holidays and different celebrations all around the world. And Canada is so diverse now with so many different groups. I would assume that just studying food could be a history of the world. Yeah. Pretty much is, right, guys? <laughs> Our potlucks are pretty tasty. Uh, it, could you tell the school in Maryland how many different nationalities or different countries go to your school? Oh, we can do like a whole country. We can do our class. I mean, <laughs> how, many, oh, how many are it just in our class, do you think? Um, I'm not like, yeah, one, two, three. Wait, how many, yeah, how many white people are in here? <laughs> like 10 just in our class, 10 different nationalities just in our class. Okay, and how many languages are spoken in your, it just in that classroom right there? Hey, Hey, Swahili, what other languages do we speak Hindi. in this class? Tagalog. Hindi. Arabic. Arabic. Brazilian Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese. French. Spanish. French. Macedonian. Macedonian. There you go. So a lot of us speak a few different languages, let alone all those different languages from around the world. Wow. That's, that's just really amazing. It's, it's neat to be able to share. I know in your uh, cupcakes and stuff that you had, you, you showed a lot of different input and that, that's really good. There's a lot and of fun I, guys. I, I believe the people from Maryland, uh, the people from Ukraine had to leave, but I think somebody from Maryland is of Ukrainian descent and uh, it's kind of nice to get to learn a little about your heritage as well. Absolutely. We do a lot of different cultural history projects here and, and bringing in a lot of food. So it's really, I think, an awesome experience for all of us to learn about each other, and and our two students really enjoy each other's foods too, don't they, guys? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> then we we will say goodbye for today, and then uh, we will see you again next month. Okay. All right. See you. Bye. Bye from Maryland. Bye, Maryland. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.